hair in my mouth. Nice. <clears throat> what up, ladies and gents? Welcome to the basic disc guide. This video is going to be the first in a series of videos that I'm going to do that should prepare you for starting out as a disc priest in Arena, uh, even if you haven't played it at all, ever. Uh, this this should have you covered. So uh, I'm going to follow up this video with a couple of videos on add-ons, macros, bindings, that sort of thing. And then I'm going to finish it up with uh, a more advanced video that is going to potentially teach you some of the aspects of, of disc that you wouldn't really learn until like a lot later, but are still going to be useful for you, even if, you know, you, you've got a little bit of a grasp on the spec and you're looking to take it a little bit further, that sort of thing. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, race, covenant, gear, talents, comps, and then finish it up with some general tips. So the first thing we're going to talk about is race. Now, race comes down to very much the pace of the game and is very much tied to whether or not you can play Relentless or whether you have to play Medallion. And you probably notice right now the game pace is really fast. Uh, you'll have gotten one shot a few times. Maybe you haven't even stepped into Arena. It's really fast. Right now, you want to play with Medallion. If you're playing threes, if you're taking threes serious at all, you want to play Medallion. And this means that you don't want to be human because you're not going to get value out of your human. Medallion shares a 90 second cooldown with human racial. Uh, which means it's relatively useless because Medallion cooldown itself is two minutes. Uh, so you end up gonna, you're going to end up in some dodgy three minute cooldown rotation where you can't use your trinket properly and all sorts. So if you're playing Medallion, you generally don't want to be human. It's a massive waste of a racial. You want to be Night Elf. Because Night Elf has Shadow Mode. Shadow Mode, super useful right now. People are one-shotting everyone. You know, you're going to get convoked by Boomkins and all sorts. It's going to one-shot you. You can meld that. You're going to live. It's good. It's good shit. Go Night Elf. If you're playing twos and you're really just only focused on twos, you can go human. You can play Relentless. That's fine. Um, That's pretty much it for Alliance. Uh, For Horde, it's even simpler. You just go undead. Everything else is somewhat memory like we're assuming right now that you're min maxing if you're min maxing you go on dead there's shadow priests everywhere there's warriors everywhere uh there'll be comps where you can actually even run relentless you can run trinket most of the time probably and still get a good value out of it uh goblin is nice but it's a niche case uh i guess gnome is nice for boomkins but again it's a niche case you want to pick the, you, you know, you're playing ladder. You want to pick the race that's going to be best against the most comps. So for threes on Alliance is Night Elf. For twos, Human on Horde, Undead. Easy. Next thing we're going to talk about is gear. And gear, right now, right now, gearing is probably the best it's been in, like, since Wad. Wad had pretty good gearing. Anyway, the new, the new gearing system is fantastic. We've got a gear vendor. Uh, we get 550 conquest per week. You can upgrade that gear as you gain rating with honor. You get honor from arena. You essentially can gear solely from arena if you want to. You're going to get slightly slower, but you can do it. Uh, so if you just want to queue arena all day, that's fine. Uh, and the good thing is, most of our best gear is from arena. It's, it's from just PvP gear in general. Um, because right now our stat priority is Versa Haste. Uh, Bursa being the most important one because we have two trinkets, uh, PvP trinkets, that give a set bonus, regardless of which two you use. And this set bonus gives you 40% extra damage and healing from your versatility. So that makes versatility very desirable. You want as much versatility as you can possibly get because it's just a stronger stat. Uh, but as a disc, we need to press a lot of buttons. We need to do a lot of things. There's a lot of clutch things you can do. You need to do spell fast. You need to death fast. You need to fear fast sometimes. You know, you want those globals to be relatively short. Uh, so haste is our second best uh, stat right now. And the good thing is most of the gear off the vendor has a slot that has a Versa haste piece, which is fantastic. It's We, we are in the best state, I think, as a priest. We have been in almost... In living memory, like I can't remember a time when gearing was more suited and the items that we could get from PvP was more suited to Priest. Like even back in TBC, we had Spirit on gear and stuff like that when MP5 was the best and then he nerfed MP5 and then Spirit was the best and down. then there was MP5. It was, it was a shit show. Right now, we're in a good spot. Go PvP, pick up the gear. Basically every slot. Uh, I'm going to put a Abyss list. 
I almost don't need to, but I'm going to put a bis list uh, in the description just in case you're not 100% sure. Uh, but essentially everything comes from the vendor except your legendary. And one of your rings, you can actually buy one of your rings off the auction house because it has a shit ton of Versa and there is no second Versa haste option. And Master and Crit are kind of neck and neck right now since Crit got buffed in Arena from 150% value to 175%. That actually happened in Shadowlands. So this ring is fine. It has a, it has a lot of Versa run. It's 226. You're not going to get a higher eye level one. So yeah, you can straight, straight up buy it if you've got the gold. If not, get saving. Uh, with regards to trinkets, you are going to want probably an emblem and an insignia. Uh, the emblem is going to be useful in, in threes right now a lot. I pretty much run emblem every game right now in threes because you mostly run into caster cleaves. Most of them are with a pallet or something with a stun uh, and they can do goes on you. They can kill you. Damage is high. Emblem is useful here. It has intellect on as well, which is always good for priests. Uh, you're going to run into Rogue Mages, 100% they can kill you. You're going to run into Cleaves, 100% they can kill you. So Emblem is really good in threes. Uh, and it's going to save you using an extra cooldown on yourself because you used this on yourself instead. And that's going to save you an extra cooldown for your team. Uh, the other option is Insignia. Insignia is more useful in twos, I would say. There's less burst in twos, obviously, because there's only one DPS on you. Uh, and you might find matchups where, you know what, I feel like I'm dying. You know, these Windwalkers are killing me. These Warriors are killing me. I want em Emblem, you know. I want that, that bit of extra HP. Other people will know as Battle Master Trinket, by the way. Um, but most of the time, I think you can run Insignia in twos and just get that extra intellect proc uh, with the passive haste. And, you know, you can get away with it, which is cool. Uh, it's giving you extra healing, extra damage. The second trinket, as we talked about earlier, is going to be most of the time in threes, you're going to play Medallion. Because you're going to have to Trinket Radiance people sometimes. And we're going to talk about that later. But Trinket Radiance is sort of your go-to save for people. Uh, when you're in a CC and they're taking heavy damage. So Trinket, Medallion Trinket is very important. Uh, again, if you're playing with Relentless, uh, sorry, with Human and, and Relentless in twos, then uh, then you'll have the Relentless Trinket. You won't play with the Medallion Trinket and, and you'll get more value out of that. Uh, but again, that's a niche case, and it's something for you to decide on yourself if you want to min-max that. As for your weapon, uh, people have asked, do you go one-hand offhand or do you go staff? Right now, staff has Versa Haste on it. Uh, the one-hand offhand does not. And we don't we don't have anything like corruptions anymore. We don't have sockets on weapons anymore. There's only certain items with sockets on now, which is actually, before I forget, helm, neck, uh, braces, belt, and rings. Pretty sure I haven't forgotten one. Pretty sure I haven't forgotten one. Uh, they all have sockets on. Or the potential to have sockets on once you get exalted with them all. And so that means that the staff is, is the best choice. Because it doesn't matter having an extra item via the offhand now. Uh, which actually does bring us on to the next thing, which is gems. You want the 16 Versa gems. Uh, because of, again, the, the set bonus from the trinkets. Versa is just the, the strongest stat. Uh, your chest enchant should be 20 int, 6% mana. Your cloak enchant should be fortified speed. Uh, because, you know, you're going to be wanting to push for fears. You're going to try and kite people around pillars. You're going to push in. You're going to run back. You're going to be running a lot. So speed is essentially meaning you have to run less. You're spending less time running because you're going faster. Uh, so this is the best option on the cloak. Ring enchant, simple, 16 Versa. Weapon Enchant, Celestial Guidance. This is going to give you a 5% int proc occasionally, which again is just more throughput for you, whether you're doing damage or healing. Generally, procs are not bad for Priest right now because you're always doing something. There's some classes where you feel like you're not always doing stuff and there's sort of downtime where you don't have to do stuff. Disc is not that. There is always something that you can be doing on Disc, whether it be redotting, doing damage, rebuffing shields, re buffing whatever healing you know all sorts you're going to be doing something so if you get a proc it's going to make that thing that you're doing better uh gloves and boots there is no caster enchant so you don't need to worry about it. next thing i want to talk about in the gearing section is legendaries there are a lot of people asking me lately oh yeah ryan which legendary you want to go which legendary is the best 
There's no simple answer for what legendary is the best for disc. There are a few really good legendaries and they all have their own situational uses where they are going to outperform other ones. So to start with, I'm going to talk about Cephas. Cephas Proclam Proclamation uh, is essentially half relentless. And the reason this is good is because right now we're running Trinket a lot. And, and we're talking about threes here, right? Right now we're running Trinket a lot in threes. We're playing Night Elf because of it. So we pick Cephas as our legendary because it gives us half of Relentless as well. Plus, uh, there's a proc on it, which gives all secondary stats. You get 80 of them for 15 seconds and it can occur once every 30 seconds. So 50% uptime. You can get near this, right? You're going to have probably 40, 45 to 50% uptime as a disc in Arena. You're dispelling a lot. You're fearing a lot. Uh, it's going to proc. This gives the legendary a lot of value for us, uh, on top of the fact that, you know, we get that 10% relentless and this kind of just brings it out on top in terms of, in, in terms of threes in most matchups. Now there are some matchups where there's another legendary that is, is going to be strong for us in threes. And that is. Twins of the Sun Priestess, the double PI legendary. Essentially, when you PI someone else, you get it yourself as well. And this is going to be good when you're playing a comp with uh, a class that really benefits from PI. So something like a mage. Uh, Hunter really benefits from PI. Rhett really benefits from PI. Uh, I believe Enhancement really benefits from PI as well. Any class that really benefits from haste. You want to play with this, but not against anything. You want to play with this against comps that don't have a lot of CC for you. So if you're playing against something like RMP, you don't want to play this. You want to play with Cephas. So you've got to think about it as well a little bit. You're going to make your own choice. You're going to be playing probably more games into teams where Cephas is going to be better. So I would recommend making Cephas first if you're 3v3 focused, regardless of what comp you're playing. Uh, for 2v2, you can pick up Crystalline Reflection. And the reason I was recommending people to get Crystal Crystalline Reflection as their first legendary is this has value against everything. This is always going to be good against what you're playing. It might not be the best, but it's going to be it's going to be useful no matter what. Uh, and yeah, in twos, you don't need Cephas as much. You're probably able to play Relentless more. Relentless doesn't stack with Cephas, so you can play something else. Generally, you don't want to play with Radiance, which rules out the Penitent one. In twos, you're going to be avoiding Radiance. You want to run Radiance in twos only against Windwalkers uh, and double DPS. Because you just can't outheal the damage otherwise. You really will struggle. That means that the Penitent one is not always going to be useful. So if you're building this first and you're playing twos and you're not always running Radiance, you're getting no value out of your Legendary. In threes, however, this can be useful too. This is, this is sort of like my fourth priority Legendary, I would say. Because... Uh, the buff is purgeable, you need to keep that in mind. And you're probably going to be radiancing maybe like five times per game, right? This legendary aims for you to use radiance a lot, but you can't right now because of mana constraints. So maybe radiance five times per game, this is going to give you maybe two, three procs if you're lucky. Uh, and again, those are purgeable. And you want to use those procs for damage because you just used your healing, uh, your radiance for healing. So you want to save this proc for damage. But it's purgeable, so again, you're going to have a tough time. If it gets purged, you lose your legendary value. So that's why I recommend people just kind of steer away from this a little bit. It does have its cases, but I think if you're watching this guy because you want to learn this in the first place, uh, I would recommend Cephas if you're focusing on threes, Crystalline Reflection if you're focusing on twos. Uh, last thing to note, I guess, is Vault of Heavens, which uh, is probably like a second, third, maybe fourth legendary for you to build. And this is going to be a legendary for your survivability against Cleaves, because it's going to allow you to grip yourself away. We generally lack mobility as a priest. This is going to solve that, and it's going to get you away uh, with the help of your team. If you have someone stand 40 yards away, you're going to grip and they're going to have to use all kinds of mobility to get to you. We still have another grip. We have door. This is going to be like, you know, a 50 to one minute cooldown with the conduit. And you're going to have a lot more survivability. Not something to worry about straight away, but just something that, you know, is valuable to be aware of. Um, 
But yeah, that pretty much wraps up with regards to the legendaries. We don't mend a lot right now, and this generally has too much of a constraint compared to the previous version of it in BFA. Uh, you know, if you mend at 14 seconds, you get no, val no value, that sort of thing. Uh, Kiss of Death potentially has use against mages, but I think you're just going to find more use, more value from the other ones overall. Um, the rest is all just Torghast and PvE-related stuff, so you don't need to worry about them. The next question that a lot of people have been asking me and, and wanting to know, what covenant do you go? Yeah, not so much now, but definitely at the start of the expansion, never wanted to know what covenant you go as disc for arena. Go Venthyr. Don't think about Kyrian. People might say, you know, maybe Kyrian, maybe Kyrian. Right, Kyrian's bad. Don't go Kyrian. Go Venthyr. Mind Games is insane. Uh, Mind Games is like half our class right now. <laughs> go Venthyr. Uh, Door is also a massive, massive thing for us. Um... Again, as a class with very low mobility, any mobility is very, value very, very valuable. You can use it for getting fears off sheeps, off traps, off, off stuns. No matter what you play with, you can follow up with a fear with door. Uh, it's awesome. Go Venthyr. With regards to soulbinds, we have two soulbind trees as a Venthyr. We have two options. We have Nadra and we have Theater. Now... Nadja, the route is relatively obvious because familiar predicaments is insane. This is where we want to end up. The duration of incoming interrupts now and route effects is reduced by 25%. It's insane. Uh, so we will all be, always be grabbing this because it's also on the potency conduit slot, which is perfect, to be honest with you. The unfortunate thing about Nadja is to get the other potency slot, you have to go through Agent of Chaos. Agent of Chaos actively makes our class worse. Because it says it, it disorients someone for six seconds. It actually is three seconds in PvP and it removes dots. Uh, and the awkward thing is it's on Fear DR. So what this prevents you from doing is dooring directly on top of somebody who's in a cheap shot, for example. And then fearing them out of it because this will instantly proc and DR them on the Fear. And then you have to wait two seconds for this, this after your global, obviously. Uh, you have to wait two seconds and then press fear. So you get like two globals in between or whatever, maybe one if you don't have a lot of haze. Um, and then you have to fear. And then your fear is DR'd. And then you get like another two globals before the fear ends. So it, what it does is it really interrupts the flow of your damage sort of rotation cycle during your fear because you have to use an extra global to get essentially what is a normal fear duration. So Agent of Chaos is very bad for us because it's, this means that we now have to door slightly off the target that you want to fear so that you don't DR them. And this leaves room for people to stop you. Uh, you can get stunned, you can get feared, you can get CC'd. Uh, you know, the healer can use something in that time. There's all the whole load of things that can happen to you in this, this tiny gap uh, that is now created by having to door slightly off the target. Instead of dooring and instantly fearing, like hammering the button and, and fearing the moment you door on top of them, you now have to, you know, you have like a, I don't know, point half, point five second gap, right? Where you have to run on and, and you can get stopped. Uh, so that's why this is so bad. However, we have to get the condon uh, the potency conduit at the moment. So what I've done, uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to like sort of segue into conduits here. What I've done is I've put my penance conduit here because you can switch soulbinds in arena. You can switch roots in arena. The only thing you can't switch in arena is which conduit is in which slot. So I can switch to con uh, to theater at the start of the game if I want to. So if I go into a twos match and I see, oh, yo, it's a, it's a windwalker. And I'm normally I'm playing Nadja. Oh, it's a windwalker. I want radiance against windwalker. You want the Radiance Conduit. When you play Radiance, you always want the Radiance Conduit. If you don't play Radiance, you play with the Penance Conduit. And your potency ones. That's it. Really easy. Your Finesse Conduits should be Clear Mind. Uh, if you have a second slot, you can run Mental Recovery. There are also some situations where you might prefer Mental Recovery if you're not dispelling a lot. But our mana right now is really bad, so Clear Mind is very strong. Uh, with regards to endurance conduits, most likely you're going to have two endurance slots. Uh, maybe you'll only have one. I'd say that the endurance conduits are between these two. 
you either go for the fade one or you go for the desperate prayer one uh if you're a little bit newer the desperate prayer one might be a little bit easier for, to, for you to use uh but do remember that fade is off global cooldown you can press it any time that someone's training you and you're going to get value out of it when you get a little bit better you can see all right these guys want to want to stun me now i'm going to press fade and then you'll get a little bit of damage reduction during that stun uh which is potentially i would say more valuable than than lights inspiration later on but if you go for something like theater you're going to have one uh maybe two endurance slots right so you'll have them both charitable soul not worth it don't worry about that one it's it's not good uh there may be some some caster cleaves where it's good but generally don't worry about it uh, so that's pretty much it for conduits. The pathing again is, is relatively self-explanatory. You just want to go down this way to get the potency slot and then down to here and get another potency slot. If you really can't deal with agent of chaos, you can actually drop a potency slot. Uh, this is mostly the twos tree anyway, at least I'm, I'm treating it as such. Uh, you can actually come this way and you'll end up with a 40% speed boost on your door instead, which is fantastic. Uh, again, you will drop the potency for that, but if you're grabbing the penance one down here, Later on, then that's fine, I think. Uh, you don't need the Radiance one and Shattered Perceptions, which is, I guess, the third option. Uh, or Rabid Shadows are the third options are not that big of a, a game changer for you. So that's definitely something that you, you can potentially do later on. We haven't got that far yet, so it's not that relevant. Theatar is pretty obvious route. These ones don't matter. You just come down this way because you get freedom shoes here, freedom on your door, which is awesome. Uh, because you can just, if you manage to get their kicks, you can door to a nearby pillar, shield instantly, and kite them around the pillar. And this is going to give you a lot more survivability. Uh, then you grab a potency conduit down here, and then you're most likely going to come down and get Wasteland Propriety. Uh, as it's going to give you extra 6% extra versatility on mind games, which is a lot. This is flat versa, and it's going to be going to give your team 3% versa reach, which is nice. Every 45 seconds, maybe to a minute if you're not using it on cooldown. The other option being token of appreciation because you want the potency, uh, which definitely has merit, uh, 100%. And yeah, you can grab this if you're playing with something like a feral or any sort of off healer. They're going to get a shield. Uh, every time, every 20 seconds, every time they heal you, which is a fair bit. I play with a Feral at the moment and heals me a lot. So it's it's free shield for, for your team. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. We haven't opened Draven yet. Draven is not that good anyway. He's potentially going to be useful against some cleaves, but don't worry about him for now. Just switch between the first two. Penance on this one, Radiance on this one. Next thing that brings us on to is Talents. And... Talents are relatively easy right now. There's not a lot of changing going on. The talent tree is very stale for disc right now. It needs a rework. Uh, but we're working with what we got right now. And at the moment, you can just run this against most things. If we're talking about twos first, you can run this against most things. Uh, in twos, you will also run this. This is the setup you want for twos. If you're facing a Windwalker in twos, you'll probably want something like this. If you're facing double DPS in twos, Mage Rogue or whatever, then you'll want something like this. That's pretty much it. That's all of the variants for twos right now, I would say. For threes, uh, you can play something like this as well. This is like your base, your default setup, I guess. Uh, you also have the option to run Trinity instead of Dark. I wouldn't recommend this when you're starting out because your Radiance will no longer apply Atonement. And it will make it difficult for you to keep atonements up because you're going to have to keep reshielding to get them up. Um, so I wouldn't worry about this too much yet. Stay with Dark. If you're playing against a mage, you play with Thought Steel, or you can play with Dispel. Keep Dome. Keep Radiance. Radiance every game in threes right now is really strong. With regards to this is the, this is basically the only other change you make: either Castigation or Twist of Fate. Twist of Fate against things like Rogue Mage, things with heavy burst damage and heavy CC where you have not a lot of globals in between to top your team. You know, they have kicks. They have things to stop you. Against comps that don't have so much CC, uh, but still have good damage, you can run something like Castigation. And this is going to allow you to spot heal with Penance more, do more Atonement healing with Castigation, just generally a more fluid play style. Uh, and 
This allows you to use Radiance less and in turn keep, conserve more mana because your Penance really packs a punch. And it's going to allow you to be more mobile because you don't have to mend as much because your Penance does more, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so I recommend against like Caster Cleaves, potentially even Cleaves at the moment. Uh, you can actually run Castigation. It does feel good. Penance is really good right now. Uh, which brings me on to the next thing, which is comps. Now, for twos, we actually have quite a lot more things we can play this expansion. Uh, I'm not entirely certain on the tier list, but I'll tell you what's decent. Uh, they might not be perfectly equivalent, but I'll tell you what's decent. And then I'll tell you what's sort of mid-tier. Um, and then anything else is just going to be a rough ride, I think, to be honest with you. Um, but right now, top tier twos partners for, for this is going to be Sub Rogue, Rep Pala, uh, Survival or MM Hunter are both good. Feral Druid, Windwalker Monk. Windwalker is just insane damage right now. Uh, and then mid tier is like Arms Warrior, Enhanced Shami, Elu Shaman, Shadow Priest, that sort of thing. You just don't synergize as well with them and they need generally a lot of healing. If you have to do a lot of healing, it means you either have to play with Radiance or mend them a shit ton, which means you're not doing damage, and that kind of defeats the point of bringing a disc. So try and stick with the top tier ones. But if you've got a mate playing one of the other ones, it can still work. You can make it work. Um, with regards to Freeze, I'd say top comp right now is RMP. Hands down. Um, potentially even in the game. Uh, probably your second strongest comp is going to be Warrior Ret Disc. Not as strong as RMP, but still a really, really strong comp. Uh, and then I'd say shortly behind that is going to be MM Jungle. Survival Jungle doesn't feel good right now. Uh, it feels like a struggle. Uh, whether or not gear levels are impacting that, I don't know. But MM Jungle feels a lot better than Survival Jungle. So keep that in mind. Uh, other stuff you can play is potentially Warrior Enhanced Shaman. Something like that. Maybe Warrior Windwalker Monk. Um, just to Zerg insane damage on people. Pretty much those comps. Uh, but also you can play with Windwalker Fire Mage and Feral Fire Mage. They work as well. Not as good as RMP, but they have their uses. Um, and they definitely work to a decent rating. If this is, you know, if you're watching this video to, to learn disc for the first time, then they're definitely comps that are going to be viable for you uh, at lower ratings and, and that are going to work. Um, you know, they sort of break down at really high rating, but that shouldn't affect you too much at lower ratings. So the last thing I wanted to say, really, to kind of finish up is just some general tips. And this is by no means all, all the little things that you can do. There's a lot of little things that kind of you can do to min-max his disc. But I feel like these ones are kind of useful to know and understand just going into the game and will have a big impact on your gameplay, you know, your rating and how much fun you're going to have with the spec in general if you if you... Try to incorporate thing, these things into your play. Um, but yeah, if you're playing Trinity, then try and keep Atonement on all three players in threes as much as possible against things like caster comps, stuff that's doing damage to a lot of people, uh, which which you know may seem obvious, but you, you get a lot of value out of it. If you're playing Trinity, you get 25% extra kit on Spite, Penance, and Fiend hits. So... You know, whenever you're fiending, whenever you're doing any meaningful damage or healing, you know, whenever you're trying to do a go, it's good practice to keep up those three atonements. You know, it makes it easier to dark as well. You don't have to waste global putting up atonement it, it, during a go to just press dark for your team. You know, if you've already got them up because uh, it's good practice, then it's really easy to just press dark and, and do your own damage. Uh, we have a lot more spells this expansion to fit into our rotation. So global management ahead of time is very important. Uh, and speaking of extra spells, one of those extra spells is Mind Blast. And Mind Blast is incredibly efficient right now because it it does damage, which in turn gives you Atonement healing, and it gives the target an underspellable absorb. And this absorb is like twice as much as a shield absorb, and Mind Blast is cheaper than a shield. So really try and use Mind Blast as much as possible. It's going to save you mana in the long run. Uh... Which brings me on again to my next thing, which is try and avoid using Mend or Radiance wherever you can. Uh, within reason, you know, don't let people die because you're trying not to use Radiance, right? But 
if somebody has CC for you, if somebody has a kick available, if you think that somebody has a DR for you to, to do anything, use, you know, a mend or a radiance to get somebody to a safe HP. The rest of the time, you want to try and heal as much as you can with Atonement. And this goes for twos and threes. The more healing you can do with Atonement, the more your mana is going to last. Um, and this is this brings me on to another point, I guess, which is when you're not playing Trinity, don't shield everyone. Don't shield like crazy. Your Mend also puts up Atonement. Your Radiance also puts up Atonement. Your Mend is going to be a more efficient way for you to apply Atonement to people if you have to do it. Uh, then shield. So don't waste time doing a shield. A shield is a less HPS global uh, and less HP mana as well uh, global than mend. Uh, so don't worry. Just don't don't think. Oh yeah, I've got to have a atonement up so my mend does more. It's not worth it. Do a mend. Get the atonement up with mend. It's fine. Um, so yeah, what I'm saying is don't over shield. Uh, if you're playing Trinity, again, try and dot everything. Try and dot as many people as possible. Um, it's your most valuable global in terms of damage overall versus uh, plus, you know, healing on your guys. It's it's incredibly efficient. Uh, obviously, don't dot CC. Don't dot things that are about to be CC'd because it'll get removed and you'll just waste the mana. Everything else is free game. Uh, and you can also spread that dot with penance as well. If you see opportunities to do that, try and do it. It's a little bit more of an advanced tip, but if you keep it in your mind, it's something that, you know, you can incorporate into your play early on. It's something that you can make a habit of, then that's really good. Uh, next thing is is super important, actually. The previous ones are all kind of mechanical tips. This next one is more of just a gameplay and general tip. Try and match your cooldowns with the enemy's cooldowns. If you, uh, you know, have a good UI setup where you can see the enemy cooldowns, uh, which will be incidentally part of the next video. See that they've used the offensive cooldown. Understand that they're going to do more damage going forward. Use a preventative measure. Use a rapture. Use a dome. Which one do you use? Use rapture if you've already been CC'd. If they have CC coming for you, don't use rapture. You're just going to get CC'd on it and it's going to get wasted. If you see, okay, they have CC'd me. He wants to shoot me soon. Throw down a dome. It's going to stop so much damage. And what this does is it means you don't have to mend as much. It means you don't have to radiance as much. And this, again, saves you mana. You have to use your CDs as a preventative of the disc rather than a, as a reactionary. Because, well, I guess it's, it's a reactionary to, to, to them using the CD, but not a reactionary to damage. If, you've, if they've already taken the damage and then you're using your CD, it's getting less value uh, because you already have to heal up. So keep that in your mind. That's a massive part of disc. Uh, and I guess the, the your last big cooldown is PS, right? You have you have PS, you have barrier, and you you have rapture. That's like your main big team cooldowns. Uh, other than I guess trinket, but everyone has that. Um, save your PS for last if you can. The reason for doing this is because you can use PS on yourself and you can use your PS on team. Uh, because you can use it during stuns. Most people set up goes off stuns. If they're not setting off, if they're not setting up CC on you off a stun, then you can death it. So you know you have that potential to to delay them. You can throw out death. You can try and loss. Uh, and if you really can't do anything, then you throw out a CD. If PS is your last CD, uh, then it means that you raptured correctly and you domed correctly because you're not dead yet. I guess. Um, this is the goal, right? To have PS be that last CD so that if they want to do a swap on you, you still have PS for yourself. You know, if they drop everything or they drop a load of cooldowns on you, you still have PS for yourself. Uh, and so you have a higher chance of surviving. Even if you don't have your PvP trinket. Uh, PSing early in the game generally isn't that good right now because damage is so high. Uh, people can just go for it. Like, they really can. I've died a lot of times through PS and had teammates die a lot of times through PS just in the opener because I thought, you know, I see a Red Wings, this mage is combusted. I'll throw a PS up and they just go for it. Like, they don't care. Um, so they're either using an extra cooldown, which is bad, you're now losing on defensives, or they just kill someone and it's also bad. Um, 
So yeah, kind of keep that in mind for your main CDs. That's that's a big part of it because if you're using your CDs well, you're using less mana, you're using less radiances, uh, and mana is is like goldless right now on disc. So focus on that a lot. Uh, and I guess the last thing I want to say is is try and use your fiend relatively early on, but don't just throw it out randomly. Throw it out when your team is doing a go. When your team pops CDs, let it assist them in pressure. Uh, it does a lot of damage and it does a lot of atonement healing as well in turn. So this is going to mean that you popped Fiend on your go. Even if they do damage to your team, you're going to get some, you know, that, that damage is going to get smoothed out by the atonement healing that your Fiend provides. Uh, and that maybe is going to allow you in turn to do damage yourself rather than do a mend. And that's going to create more pressure, which means they're going to do less damage. Uh, and then we're getting a little bit too more advanced, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of leave it at that. But you kind of see where it's going. Uh, and obviously, if you popped it earlier, then you potentially, if the game goes long, you might get a second use of average, which is huge. Fiend gives mana now; it didn't in BFA, so that's why Fiend is really really good right now. Um, but yeah, that was it for this video. I'm sorry, I feel like I've dragged on longer than I wanted to, but yeah, I tried to keep it as basic as possible. Uh, the next video is most likely going to be about macros. We're going to do macros one. We're going to do just UI in general, add-ons, uh, lightly touch on keybinds, that sort of thing. That might be like two videos, something like that. And then the last video, I'm going to talk about some more advanced stuff. Um, so hopefully this video is helpful for you. Uh, let me know on Twitch, Twitch TV slash Hydromist, if you, if you liked it, if you found it useful, if you think that there was something missing, uh, if you have any more questions, really, and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.